Hi, I'm Claire and this is Top 5 Wednesday, Favorite Fictional Cities. Top 5 Wednesday was created by Lainey over at Ginger Reese Lainey and I will leave a link to the Goodreads group in the description box below so you can go and check that out if you'd like to participate. I was really excited about the topic of fictional cities because I read a lot of science fiction and fantasy. However, I quickly ran into the problem that a lot of my favorite fictional cities are actually London but fictionalized and then I realized that the book I'm writing has London but fictionalized in it. So that's clearly a trope that I did not realize I really really enjoyed. But I've managed to limit myself to only one fictionalized version of a real city and it's not even London. So let's get started. My number one favorite fictional city is already kind of stretching the definition of a city and that is the colony of habitat modules in space in Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson. In the second part of the book you've got humanity having survived the doom of the earth in space and they've got this really cool collection of satellite modules that uh, hover in space and kind of uh, move around and they're in this sort of cluster together. It's a really interesting way of organizing humans living together. Of course, it's a bit bigger than a city. It's probably more on a scale of a country or a state and it's actually divided into seven factions uh, from the seven eaves of the title of the book. However, to me that made it a lot more interesting because Neil Stevenson kind of discussed um, how people would move from one module to the other and how borders work in it. I really really enjoyed that book and I did a full review of it and uh, I will put an annotation on the screen right about now so you can go check it out if you'd like. At number two we've got Aquasulis from the Split World series by Emma Newman. Aquasulis is a fictional city which is the mirror half of Bath in England which is of course a real town. So basically we've got several worlds that are in contact with each other as per the title of the series. We've got a human world, a fae touched world and then a specific uh, fae only kind of a world that is very very dangerous. What I really like about the fae touched city of Aquasulis is that we've got some really cool world building there. Basically in Aquasulis and in all of the fae touched world there is no uh, weather. The sky is always the same kind of silvery grey and there's no clouds or anything like that and people don't age at all. It was great to have um, something that's so integral to that world and that city but also really plays on the characters and really affects the story in a really good way. At number three we have the town of Hogsmeade from the Harry Potter series and I know it's not big enough to be a city but I have wanted to go and see the shops from Hogsmeade ever since I first read the books and that was a while back now and I still haven't been able to go to any of the theme parks because they are far away and so I still think wouldn't it be amazing to just go down that street and go have a pint of butterbeer and the three broomsticks. I know it's supposed to be really sweet but I have a sweet tooth so I'd be happy with that. I'd be avoiding Madame Puddifoot's and uh, probably avoiding Aberforth Dumbledore's pub as well because he's kind of sketchy. Um, but I'd probably just like have to be dragged out of Zonko's and Honey Dukes and like try to buy my weight in sweets and stupid jokes. Let me put it that way, I just have no idea who doesn't want to go to Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley and all of the places from the Harry Potter series. I just don't know. I don't think these people really exist. At number four we've got my slight cheat which is the underground city of Seattle from the uh, Clockwork Century series by Sherry Priest. The first book is called Bone Shaker after the doom device that ravaged the city of Seattle to the point that the air above ground is barely breathable and you have to wear a mask at all time and there's also a lot of zombies around. So now we've got a really complex network of tunnels underground underneath the city of Seattle that are inhabited by people that did 
didn't leave when the bone shaker ravaged the city. People who stayed and didn't turn into zombies and are now maintaining this network of tunnels and just fixing it up and trying to make a life down there and helping out our protagonists in the first book and then recurring in um, most of the novels after that. I think it's a really cool take on the alternate history fictionalized city. And finally, at number five, we've got possibly my favorite fictional city of all, the city of Ankh Morpur from the Discworld novels. It is just a completely, completely wacky city. This city uh, has got a river that is so ridiculously muddy that basically if you throw something in it, you'll see it float on the river for days on end because it doesn't really have a flow. It's also got ridiculous pubs with ridiculous pub brawls happening all the time and dwarven bars and the Unseen University and the Guild of Assassins and the library with the orangutan librarian in it and Vimes' guardhouse and all the cobblestones that he can feel through his boots and a sanctuary for rescued dragons that is operated by a bunch of aristocrats. It's got incredible scope within it like a real city because it's something that Pratchett was able to explore throughout many many books but also despite being utterly fantastical it's also quite truthful to what city life can be like sometimes and how wacky it can get. Somehow I do not wish that there was a theme park that I could go to to experience Ink Moor Park because I don't think it sounds as pleasant to be in as Hogsmeade. So those were five of my favourite fictional cities. I hope you enjoyed this Top 5 Wednesday and please let me know in the comments below if we've got any overlap, if you've got uh, cities that I liked that you like too. And if you've done your own Top 5 Wednesday for this week, please let me know in the comments as well so that I can go and check it out. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check out the sidebar for more Top 5 Wednesday videos. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button for more videos from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching and see you soon.